Hey Mod Runners, welcome back for another episode. Uh, today's episode, we are finally going to be talking about Hiccups Bracers from How to Train Your Dragon 2. Um, I've shown you a few sneak peeks here and there, um, so today's video will actually be the how-to, um, how I got about actually creating these guys. Uh, first off, they were one of the very first things that I made when I started making the costume. Um, so the first time I've ever worked with leather was actually starting by building these guys. So if you're starting somewhere, this is actually a, a great place to start, whereas you're not going to be using up a whole lot of leather. So if you do make a mistake, you haven't used up a lot of leather. Um, but just like everything else out there, I'll go through the pictures on how I made it, starting with getting myself wrapped in duct tape, yoga mat, and then the final finished product. So let's, let's go down to the table um, over my shoulder, and you can kind of see, uh, first off, the details of the bracers themselves. Alrighty, so we have his bracers here. We're just gonna start with one um, and then add the other and then I'll go through the pictures like I always do. So first off, we have his right bracer here. This is the one that actually opens up. Uh, like so many of these button hooks or button uh, enclosures, uses the same thing. Um, underneath, um, when I first made it, I actually made this thing, the webbing, go through the two pieces and discovered um, later on that this was a compass and that this opens up. So what I did is I redid it and I put a cover on here. So this guy here holds my wallet um, and my or my ID and my money because uh, there's no reason for me to hold extra pages. But then you can see it does in fact just close up. Same thing through here. And then the other side, uh, these are D-rings and they're sewn underneath. This strap also opens up, but these pieces are actually riveted onto the main base piece. And then the compass itself, which is an actual working compass, um, and I'll go through the details on how I made it. Each four piece here has got the different uh, button rivets that underneath, and then the leather strap, and then this is just an O-ring. Uh, that you can get at our hardware store and just make sure you get the right size for hooking through your middle finger and then once again uh, another uh, button rivet right there. Uh, the tricky part about this particular piece was sizing so that when you actually put it together it covers, it comes, this piece folds over this piece and you don't want to make it too tight but you also don't want to make it too loose and then it's sewn in place here. Um, and then the straps go through the piece and then are D-ringed and enclosed right there. Um, and that's uh, this piece here. Other piece, this one is, is actually so, um, weaved through all both positions, but each one is a, its own piece. I could remove it completely if I wanted to um, with the same straps. Same enclosures here, as you can see, remember I said about making it too small or too large. These are a little small, but I've been able to make it so that it still works and closes. The same piece up here, but the tricky part about this one was the actual um, knife. Um, and then the sheath, this is made out of wood that was uh, just a regular square wood that was cut, uh, cut put together and then wrapped with leather. Um, all sanded down and kind of created the side and then painted. And then the sheath itself wrapped, um, as you can see, it does separate here. So it's two pieces. It is actually one piece that folds in and then it's cut. And then each piece is sewn here and then crisscross sewn and then riveted together on so that it goes in and out and it, it's stationary. And those are the bracers. So what we can do now is we can go through, we can go through the pictures that I have that you can see the process from one to the other. Alrighty guys, so here's the first picture. Um, I don't actually have a picture of myself getting wrapped in duct tape, but what I did is I took a regular sock, I put it on my arm, and then I had uh, my friend wrap me in my arms in duct tape so that I can get an idea of the pattern. From that pattern, what I ended up doing is I ended up carving it out onto yoga mat, as you can see from the next picture. It's carved onto, uh, it's cut out onto the yoga mat with the two different pieces and then the, the cuttings are where the weaving of the leather straps are going to be to give you an idea. From there, once I had my pattern, I cut it out onto the leather. And again, this is where I did a lot of the wet molding. 
Um, because the gauntlets are designed to be somewhat flexible, I did not uh, wet mold them too long. The water was a lot cooler, about 160 degrees, 150 degrees, and they weren't in the water very long, just enough so that they get a little bit of stiffness to them and take shape, but still flexible enough that I could actually wear them. From there, what I did was I actually started putting them together, cutting them out, uh, weaving them so that the, the straps are woven together. And now we're moving on into the actual carving of the, uh, the front paws. The front uh, back of the hand um, from the pictures is where I made a mistake. So if you're looking at this picture now, they are not completely straight. But instead, and what I'll do is I'll go back now to the live picture so that I can talk more details. Here is the, uh, the live picture. Um, as you can see, these straight pieces here are even. However, if you look closely at the photographs, these last two pieces are not. So you want to make sure that you get the correct style. If I were to remake these, I would not be carving them complete all straight. There's a little bit of difference wideness, so you'll have to look closely at the pictures to get a better idea. For my purposes, I figured, you know what, this still looks great, and I'm still very happy with it. Um, but basically, that's, uh, that's that. So now back to the pictures. You can see I'm starting to put on the hardware. All the rivets are put in place. Um, this is all done pre-staining. Um, once the forearms have been designed, straightened out, wet carved, and put the rivets in place, everything is now ready to actually be stained. What I did was I started by roping off or taping off the forearms, which are going to use a lighter brown stain or what on all the same color stains that I've used, which is the medium brown color, but I started with the black. So I taped off the forearms and did the black of the straps and the black of the base plate. And then I went through and I did the brown of the, of the upper parts and the brown of the, the back of the paws. All right, so back to the live picture. Um, after the brown was stained, um, I went through and um, I started putting all the pieces together. And after I put the pieces together is when I actually started to do some of the distressing. Because as you can see here, there's some scratches and there's a little bit of difference in colors. Regular sandpaper, just kind of go through and give it that distressed, kind of beat up look to it. Um, and that's how I got the distress of that. So after that, we'll move on to the compass now and I'll show you the, the pictures of the compass. The compass was actually started by putting a regular compass and I got some, uh, uh, some wood filler and I covered the compass itself with wood filler and then from there after it dried it was all ready to be carved and then sanded. So just using a Dremel carving tool, I started carving away, creating the top and cutting down. If I were to go back now and do it, I would probably make it out of the uh, Sculpey clay because I hadn't known about the Sculpey clay beforehand, so I used the wood filler. But after that, um, I would do it again. I would use the Sculpey clay. So I would go back and create the compass with the Sculpey clay, wrap it in the Sculpey clay, and then put it together. That way it's a lot easier to kind of sand and carve out. Um, from there, we'll move on to the actual wood of the of the knife and you can see this picture here um, just using a regular saw cutting it down and then after there sanding lots of sanding and creating the sand and then creating the t-joint which joins there and then wrapping it in leather and getting the handle um, all wrapped in leather and then then finally just painting it and getting the the, the design of the of the color right Getting the sheath was a little bit more challenging. Um, you can see it's being wrapped first and then rounded against the hard wood so that it creates the shape and it really holds its shape and then stitching everything together. And then from there, dyeing it. After dyeing it, putting it in, in place on the, uh, the bracer and then putting the, the sword finally right inside there. The final thing that I did was, we can move on to the last set of pictures here, is the creating of the compass. Basically just taking leather straps, dyeing them that nice brown color, and then moving on to 
putting them on the bracer. And we'll go back to the live picture, which is basically right here, is that this button hook can be placed here or here, dependent upon um, how loose or how tight I want it. And then these guys are all button riveted right onto the hard plate. One thing that needs to be said that as you can see here from the inside, I've never shown you a picture of the inside here, is that this is just the regular leather. You can see I didn't want to stain it completely uh, because I'm going to be wearing it. I didn't want a lot of the stain to kind of wear off, so I didn't stain um, it. But something that needs to be said is that there is a, a tool um, that I'll go through later on if you, anybody has questions on how I made it a little bit smoother, I'll go through. It's called glassing and you use this kind of fill and you put it on there and then you use a piece of glass to smooth it out and it helps make the leather which was all raggeded all smooth down. And that's the video for the bracers. Um, I hope it was helpful for you. I know you've been asking for this one specifically, so here you go. Um, I hope you're enjoying the videos. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share the videos with your friends. Um, if there was something in specifically that you needed an answer to, more questions like exactly how did you do this, I'm pretty good about uh, responding to your, your questions, so please leave me a comment down below. Thumbs up the video, share the videos, please click on the ads. I know it's a lot to ask, but it really helps me out. Um, so helping you out, please help me out. Um, have a great weekend, uh, whether it's costume making or tasting wine or taking photography, whatever it is out there, go out and find your passion.